Testing, testing, one, two, three. 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 Hello, can everyone hear me? Yep. You can hear me now? Yep. Yes? Yes. Okay. Hello, hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. We are on, we are on. I don't know what was going on, to be honest. Be honest. But go ahead. <laughs> this is about self-love, and this is where you started. Today, forevermore, after 24 more minutes, we're supposed to be at 9 o'clock, but we got here. We're still here, so we hope that everybody come and join us back. Um, as we continue with self-love and where do I start? I am Judah Bernard with the Rise, Creating Your Voice, with some dialogue, a motivational warrior of the Rise, Creating Your Voice. We have our special guest on, which is Stephen Martin. Stephen, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, everyone, how you doing? If this is your first time to the show, what are you doing? For those of you who are returning to the show, welcome back. My name is Stephen Martin. I'm an average Joe. What I mean by saying that is exactly what it sounds like. I am just a normal guy. Nothing too special, nothing too unspecial about me. What we'll be discussing today is self-love. What we've been discussing over the last couple of months has been all the ways in which the things of which encompass our self-love, whether it's bettering our mental health, bettering our physical health, bettering our spirituality, or overall faith in ourselves. So uh, what I'm here and what my purpose is as a co-host for the show is to show you guys that this is an equal thought process, that we are all on the same page here, and we are all human beings all looking to figure out the same answer, accomplish similar goals. What can we do to make our lives a little bit better, a little bit easier, and on top of that, uh, come to love and appreciate ourselves as best we can. And the number one thing is we want to apologize. Um, hey, it's human error and computer error, everybody's error. But let us know we are getting ready to get into this 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 topic about self love and where do I start? So I want to definitely understand what self love is meaning. And one thing that I've come into realization that is one's own well being and happiness. This is how you develop yourself and you start with self by doing the things. One question I want to definitely ask is those who have been on our live and on our Podbean app is how many have done the actual necessary work as far as doing the homework that we discussed or last week about damaged goods, writing those damaged goods down and looking at some of the things that you can change in order to make more positive things into those goods. Because things is if we continue to harbor and things on those things, that they're continue to bring down negativity and um, bring low self-esteem and things like that. So our question for today is, do you really love yourself? One thing that I have learned to do in this pandemic is self-love. And I've do done it before, but I don't think I was doing it correctly. And in my doing it correctly, meaning that paying more attention to self and being aware of what self is. What are some of the things that we do as self-love? So my thing is, do you think that loving yourself is selfish? That's the question that I want to ask people today. Do you think that loving yourself is selfish? Many of us have been taught that tending to our own needs first is wrong. Remember people say, oh, but why are you always think about yourself? Why are you always doing this? Or why are you always doing that? Sometimes we need to consider self first in order for us to move further into our own lives so we know that we come a part of what we need to be. So the thing is, many of us have been taught that tending to our own needs first is wrong. But the truth is learning to love yourself is not selfish. It is, in fact, the key to a free and happy life. So my question to everyone that's listening online, do you want to discover how to cultivate a deep sense of love for yourself? Do you long to radiate confidence and security in your life? It is so easy to fall into the trap of self-doubt, procrastination, 
and negativity. Once we start comparing ourselves to others, we find it even harder to find self-love. I know I was in a trap where I had a lot of things that were going on where I was trying to compa keep comparing myself to someone else and not actually looking into the depths of who I supposed to be and what my purpose and what my calling is in life in ordering what self-love was particularly for me and not anyone else. Only thing I want to know is tell you is it is not selfish to love yourself first. It is essential. And we're not talking about being arrogant or telling people how awesome you are. This is about we're talking about accepting yourself on a deep human level and treating yourself with respect. I know we have two co-hosts and speakers on. What do you think about that, Stephen? Uh, I'm going to have to respectfully disagree somewhat. Okay. I spend a healthy amount of time on this show explaining to people that the word selfish is not a bad word. And when I say that, I mean it wholeheartedly. And the reason I stand by that is because too many of us spend too often utilizing the word selfish as a derogatory terminology. The word selfish in and of itself means spending a healthy or overly healthy amount of influence, time, and focus on oneself. Now, the level of which you incorporate your focus and attentions to yourself are entirely up to you. But something we've discussed over every single episode we've had over this series has been an understanding that unless we are at our best potential, whether it is mentally, spiritually, physically, or all the above, we are never going to be able to put our best foot forward in the world around us or for those around us either. So although the word selfish might sound like a bad word, the reason it's become known and recognized as such a bad word to some is because if you're being selfish and you're focusing on yourself, that means you're spending a little bit less time and a little bit less energy focusing on others. And unfortunately, not everyone, and even the people that are supposed to care and love us, can understand that it's important to be selfish first. And uh, the reason I respectfully disagree is not because I actually disagree with Judah's statement, but because I think it's important to realize that if we're going to use the word selfish, that it is being selfish. And that's okay. It's important to be selfish. And a lot of the times it's because we're not being selfish enough that we have to have these conversations like we've already had with Judah in the past about having our cup almost go empty. And this cup of life that we have for our everyday news, you know, we're constantly pouring our cup into other people's cups up until the point where we have nothing left for ourselves or for anyone else. But Judah made a good point a couple episodes ago to say, once your cup is overflowing, you have nothing but the opportunity to pour into the cups of other people. And how do you go about providing yourself and acquiring an overflow is by being selfish, learning when to exert your energies, who to exert them with, and what to do to best improve upon your spirituality, your physical health, your mental health, and all of the above. So I think something that <clears throat> all of us really need to recognize is that if you want to focus on self-love, that requires being selfish. And being selfish means having the opportunity to let go of the stigmas and of the biases and of the general judgments that some might have when they see you focusing on yourself. Some people don't like to see you doing better. Some people don't like to see that you're focusing on just you. And some people are jealous of the fact of the matter that you're doing better and they're not. But the reality is until you start being selfish, no one wins especially not you. So I think, if anything, if we're going to focus on self-love, we're going to have to acknowledge the fact of the matter that being selfish is a part of the process and not a bad word. What do you think, Rita? I love it. James, what do you have to say about that? Uh, I feel that uh, selfish is a good thing, but uh, like you said, we have to be mindful of it to the point to where we are over indulge in it to the point where we uh, call and inflict on somebody else's. Instead of pouring in, we uh, contaminate or 
invite ourselves uninvited into somebody else. So a lot of times that takes place as well. So when that takes place, that means uh, you have to be at the point of accepting the fact, learning how to reverse it or apologize and do that. That's why you are insurance on somebody else's feelings. Right? I like the idea and I'm, I have to learn how to be selfish to that degree to where I am helping myself more than helping everybody else. But I found myself helping more folk, but I was being left out. So I had to turn around and refocus and not only refocus, but reorganize my thought pattern, reorganize my way of thinking, and reorganize my way of doing to where I was selfish toward myself first and then I could help somebody else. I really like that idea. And forgive, forgive me for being late. I was at another function and I was running and I, I, I had to pull over to the side to get on. If I know if I made it home, I wouldn't be able to get on. All right, all right. I think both have great points, but I say it once again. Number one is it is not selfish to love yourself first. So in it, you have to really dig deep because we've been trained and taught that, oh, got to help other people out. We got to do this. We got to do that. We got to do this. And yet, next thing you know, you're pouring into everyone else and not pouring anything into you. And I call that cup half empty. So if it's half empty, you know, you're over the thermometer of empty like a gas tank. So that means you went past the actual turn hand on the empty. So you went past that. That means you have nothing else to give. And sometimes that tires us out. That that becomes overwhelming for us because then we realize, oh my gosh, I've gave so much of myself and haven't given anything to myself. So that's the important piece of it. Moving right along, understand that when you love yourself, you create self-confidence, self-worth, and I want to put self-compassion in there because this is a topic about self. One of the biggest problems we all face in this age is Instagram and Facebook. It's about validating ourselves through the approvals of others. Oh my gosh, why they didn't like my post? Oh my gosh, I only have three followers. Oh my gosh, I only know... Look, understand, if you are doing something, and I have to say this for myself, I did not relate anything that I'm doing on Facebook or Instagram become a follower issue. Because if you have a passion about something that you're putting out in the social media, accept your passion. Whether you have one like or no like, guess what? Love yourself for even putting it out there. As an introverted person, guess what? This is hard for me. But guess what? I'm doing it. And I know we probably have a lot of introverted people out there that don't want to get into social society sometimes. You have anxiety when you go into different situations. Guess what? You putting that out there is a form of communication to the outside forces of the world. So celebrate yourself even if you just post it. This is not about likes. This is not about loves or everything. The thing is, you just keep doing what you're doing. To be honest to you guys, sometimes I only get five people listen to my podcast. Guess what? I've touched someone somewhere in many different countries. And guess what? I'm fulfilled because that's self-love. I poured myself and to them. And that's self-love. That's a part of me growing, part of me continuing to move forward for the good of the nation. One thing that we also do is we, we when we are con constantly comparing our lives to other people or have worth tied up in their opinions of us, we are setting ourselves up for misery. How many of us stop and just look and say, oh, well, I wonder what they think about me? That's a tough pill to swallow because some that's how we sometimes were raised. People can, you know, congratulate us. People say, hey, you're doing well. But then again, talk about how behind your back. Then you find out, then you're like, I thought they said I was doing so well. 
then you become confused. So our better thing is know who you are for your self-worth, but understand that you still can celebrate you at your present moment and celebrating self-love. The answer is to have that sense of self so cemented that nothing anyone can say or do can knock you from your knowledge of who you are and what you are worth. That deep place of self-love is the starting place for all miracles. Start making miracles in your life today by practicing self-love. On to you, Stephen. What do you think about that? Well, it's interesting to say, I mean, that in the practice of self-love, a lot of the times we have to focus on just ourselves. And it's true in a lot of cases, and just like James had said a little bit earlier, he had to take an opportunity for himself to reassess and reanalyze his thought processes and what he was doing in his day-to-day -day life to really make sure that it was the most optimal and the best thing he could do for himself. Now, the misconception more often times than not, and something I want to make sure we, we don't do ourselves is think that just because we're worrying or focusing on ourselves that we are incapable or that it is impossible for us to extend our emotions, our values, or our efforts towards other people as well. It's not the case. You can still very well work on yourself and be a contributing member of society, to your family, to your relationships, to your friends. The biggest thing to consider is knowing yourself. And Judah made a pretty strong point in saying, until you do so, you're kind of at a standstill. You can't know what's an appropriate amount of energy to give other people if you don't know what you need yourself in order, for order to hold yourself over. You can't know what's an appropriate amount of energy to put into the world around you if you don't know how much energy you need to have on reserve for yourself. And if it comes to a point where you're at a place in your life where you're at a conflict, whether it's with yourself, with your work, with your family, with your friends, or in life in general, there is instances all throughout our lives, and they might very well continue to be, where we have to reassess, readjust, and take a look at our lives from the outside in and see if this is what's best. And more often times than not, because we are human beings, we could do a little better. Don't you think? More often times than not, we could eat a little healthier. We could maybe exercise a bit more. Maybe watch more positive things on the television rather than what we choose to watch. Maybe spend a little less time on social media, more time with our family and our friends. There's always an opportunity and room for growth so long as like, we claim to be human beings. We're always, always, always going to be actively working on something. Now, whether we choose to work on these things or we allow them to get worse over time until they're unmanageable is entirely up to us. But something that I've continued to stress almost every episode since being here, and something I'll stress again, is that being selfish is extremely key to that success. The reason being is that it's the foundation behind you. And only you can know what's best for you. Only you can feel what you feel both physically, mentally, spiritually, and all the above. So with all that being said, if you know what's best for you, you also know what's worst for you. You also know what doesn't sit well with you. And you also know what stunts or hinders your growth as a person. So with all that being said, being selfish is almost like getting to know yourself a little bit better. And isn't it important to get to know yourself as best you can so that you can do what's best by you down the line. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Let's say you don't. Let's say you fall into the habit of constantly giving but never taking, never receiving, never treating yourself, never worrying about yourself. And you continue to do this your whole life. There's aspects about the quality of your life that you can question. Did you put yourself first? Are you truly happy? Are you healthy? Do you find joy and beauty in the simple things in life? And maybe not the so simple things. A lot of times, thanks to things like social media, thanks to movies, television, you name it, we spend too much time comparing ourselves to the world around us. 
And now with social media, over the last five, ten years, being so readily available to all of us, I think people have become even more susceptible to forgetting that we are, in fact, human beings. And we are portraying ourselves as these angels and these saints amongst humans, as if we only should present ourselves in our finest moments. But I think something that makes us so valuable as a species is the fact of the matter that we are imperfect, and that it is an impossibility for us to reach that. And we can spend all of our lives trying to compare ourselves, whether it's comparing our cars, our houses, our belongings, our body, our physique, our intellect, our aesthetic, whatever it might be. We could spend our whole lives trying to compare to the person to the left or to the right of us. But self-love is learning to appreciate yourself in your entirety without the need for comparison, without the need for self-judgment, and without the need of envy of other people. And that's a key thing to remember, is if you start finding yourself envying other people, then you need to readdress and reassess how much you love yourself. Don't get me wrong. I envy some people out there. ASAP Rocky is going to have a kid by Rihanna. I'm very jealous. <laughs> I would absolutely love to be ASAP Rocky right now. I'm very envious of him. He gets to marry a multi-billionaire and start a family with her, and she's an absolutely beautiful person. Does that envy dictate who I am? Does that dictate my decisions, my judgment of other people? Do I have a resentment towards ASAP now? No. No, no not at all. Why? It's because my reality is very crystal clear to me. I have a million and one things at my disposal. The opportunities are there. Now, although I might not readily see every door that's in front of me, it might see some doors, but they might not all be open quite just yet. It doesn't mean that the opportunity for a happy, fulfilling, and love-filled life is not still out there for me. And don't get me wrong, every, every day is not going to be perfect. That's a part of being human. But I'm telling you right now, self-love, just like Judah had said, is going to involve being selfish. And once you learn how key and how important that can be, you'll start to learn how important being selfish can be and how in turn it benefits everyone around you. And uh, once it gets to the point where your cup's overflowing, guys, and you have no excuse but to share the benefits that you've achieved for yourself, I don't think anyone's going to be mad at you. I don't think anyone's going to resent you for doing what's right by you. But mind you, take it from someone who's experienced this on a personal level time and time again, not everyone's always going to appreciate your journey. Not only that, not everyone's going to support your happiness, your well-being, your overall ability to be selfish. In fact, many people have been so natured and nurtured into believing that being selfish is a bad thing that they might even resent you for it. But all in all, you have to stick to your guns. Remember that at the end of the day, the only person who's got your back is you. Because if you don't have your own back, it doesn't matter how much guidance, it doesn't matter how many blessings, how much love and aspiration you have from the world around you. If you can't come to love yourself, you won't allow that love to envelop you. You won't allow that love to become who you are. And I think it's important that after all these different episodes we've had, everyone, that we learn that the only reason we're listening in right now or that we're speaking is because we're all equally looking for that pursuit of happiness, to love ourselves, to love the world around us, and to put out better energies, better aspirations, and better overall quality of life for everyone around us. But it starts with you. And no one, I mean no one in their right mind should ever be angry with you for wanting to be better. And if they are, reevaluate, reassess, do as James did, because I'm sure he can vouch for it. Sometimes you need to take a step back to see where you truly are, but you'll never regret having clarity. I promise you that. Wow, that was powerful, Stephen. Very powerful. James, what do you have to say about that? You know, as he was speaking, I was wondering within myself, 
and this is for those of us that had made it to that point of uh, reassessing and, and not knowing when to reassess. When is a good time for that? And and I know he, even though I've already said that when you feel your body and your and, and things, nature will let you know. Sometimes people don't listen or look or accept. So even at that time, that's you know, a lot of people say, I wish I did this earlier. And we all say that after a period of time when we evaluated and, and, and actually seen where we are and took a step back. But for those that haven't, I'm saying this. Take the opportunity to breathe and see where you are. So you can assess yourself and I, and that's a self-evaluation that we've been saying all the time so it is very important to do that so we can say we are and you said it quite often Judy, uh, knowing yourself and i'm i'm impressed i guess even for the fact of me being older than each of you and being able to learn from you and i think that's another key is learning how to listen where you can't accept things because none of us know it all. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative and I wish that more were here, but all we can do is share what we have. But I like the way uh, you all empower everything to the point to where it's around itself. Because that's what we need to look at first with our family. We can't do anything for nobody else to thank you thank you for the knowledge and thank you and I, I think what we still have to understand and that's one thing is for everyone is is like james stephen all of us said that you have to do a self-assessment how many of us do self-assessments of ourselves daily but then again i want to switch a couple of things and have questions come from the audience but why is it important to develop self-love? The worst thing is you need to love yourself. You can build and create self-confidence, self-worth, and self-compassion. We must, we must, we must continue to do that. Because if you don't, you can't display it to someone else if you don't know how to love yourself. And when you learn how to love yourself, the whole law of attraction will suddenly seem to work to your benefit much more. That's because when you fill your desires with optimism, you allow positive things to flow to you with much more ease. I want to try to give you a couple of tips on how to develop self-love. So those who have your pen and paper, you might want to write it down. Or if you keep it in your memory, you can do that too as well. But one of the things that I practiced when I was doing self-love is I trained myself to be positive. Um, I did that by every day I wrote down three positive things about myself. It was actually on my bathroom mirrors. Um, I took a, you know, erasable marker, wrote three positive things before I went to bed. So when I woke up, I woke up with a positive attitude when I read those things that were on my mirror. And these things can be from achievements in your life to friendships you value or physical character traits you admire in yourself. The reason this helps is because it trains you to look for and appreciate the positive over the negative in your life. Imagine what it would feel like to praise instead of criticizing yourself. And there's so many times, like James said, that number one is, Oh my gosh, I think I'm, I'm getting too old to do this. I should have started way before. Guess what? What we don't know, we don't know. But when you know better, you do better. Trust me, I wasn't doing this coming out of my mother's womb. I wasn't doing this at 13 or 14. I was too busy trying to, you know, try to get like the next person. You know, the biggest people in that era for me was like Michael Jordan and Bill Cosby. But guess what I learned? that man will let you down every time. Man will let you down every time. 
So if you start putting that more, the trust and the ability to looking up to yourself more than you're investing into those other people, guess what? That will be more things of what you value and how you can bring yourself to be not only like them, but better than them. So let's start training ourselves. Understand, training starts from home. Remember, we, we all went to school. That was a part of training. So how did we become the people that we are now as far as career focused? Um, scholastic, um, scholastic scholars, scholastic aptitudes. We were trained to do that and we did it in repetition. Why can't we train to love ourselves? That's not in a, a, a prescription. That's not in a school. They tell us and train us how to do everything else but love ourselves. So why can't we train ourselves to be more positive? Why can't we write some things down as far as I'm telling you, I'm going to be honest with you guys. You think I'll be sticky crazy and like the sticky notes. I used to have so many sticky notes on my wall with positive things that it gave me a sense of I am training myself for my positive attitude. I was training myself to put things into perspective. Sometimes we say it. But like myself, I'm a visual learner. I like to see it. I put positive um, affirmations in my face. I put positive things that are going to alert me that, oh, remain positive. Sometimes we need to do that. That's my number one. Stephen, you have one? Well, for me, just like when I told James back when, and he'd ask, how do you know when it's time to take a break or to take an assessment of yourself? And normally I said, your brain and your mind will tell you. I have things which, like yourself, I have around my apartment that are reminders, whether they are like the post-it notes or just physical reminders of things that I have accomplished or I'm hoping to accomplish, or overall just things that keep me motivated in general. And an example is my my dad for the last five, six years before smartphones became the big thing and all that, my dad used to write me letters. And every couple of months, he'd write me a letter. It'd be a couple sentences at best. It'd say something like, you know, your family loves you and misses you very much out there in California. You're very smart. You're very bright. You're a very talented person. Keep a good attitude about you. And be sure to, to do your best. Love dad, right? Now, mind you, nothing of which that the guy was writing was, was Shakespeare. None of it was, was literature expertise beyond understanding and recognition. But at the end of the day, they were motivating notes that reminded me that my dad cares, that he supports me, that he, he's thinking about me even when I'm not there all the way across the country. And I have six to seven of these letters at least on my refrigerator. Now, the reason I keep it there is not because every day I go to my refrigerator and every day I sit there and I read every single note I got from him. It's not the case at all. But what I do is, is I remind myself just by seeing those pieces of paper on the fridge that if I'm not going to believe in myself and I'm not going to have faith in myself and I'm not going to love myself, then I have to remember at the very least that I have people out there who do. And it doesn't make sense for people who aren't me to have more faith, more love, and more care for me than I do for myself. And yet, being human beings, being designed the way we are, being wired the way we are, sometimes we're our own worst critics. And in turn, we become our own biggest bullies. And I think it's important to remember that the whole advocacy thing isn't just for other people. You can be your biggest fan and have it not be an egotistical thing. You don't have to be conceited to love yourself. As a matter of fact, conceited people oftentimes don't love themselves. <laughs> it's a common misconception. Yeah. It's important that we love ourselves, not just because it sounds like it's the right thing to do, but because it affects every aspect of the quality of the lives that we lead. 
And how will you know when you need these breaks? How will you know when it's time to reassess? Well, can you say you're 110% happy right now? The answer is no. Well, then assess. It's not a matter of being 100% happy all the time. I think anybody who's 100% all the time happy has either found a, a path of spiritual enlightenment that I have not yet found, or they're on drugs. <laughs> the reality is, it's impossible for most people to be happy 100% of the time, all the time, about everything in their lives. It really is. It's a big ask. We live on planet Earth. World War III is going around us. We have a pandemic. All kinds of incidents all over the world. Will Smith slapping people. we got all kinds of things to stress out about. But at the end of the day, if we cannot love ourselves, it only furthers the issues. It only makes it harder for us to accept the world around us. And it doesn't mean we'll ever figure out how to love ourselves in entirety all the time. There might be some days where we're our own biggest fans and other days we're our own worst enemies. But knowing the difference and knowing when to take a step back, knowing when things are getting a little unhealthy is what we're trying to learn here today and every day moving forward. It's that we are trying to learn and love ourselves and they are a coexisting experience. You might be five years old, 15 years old, or 80, and that doesn't guarantee that you are anywhere compared to the next person next to you. There are some very grown young people that I've met in my life. I've met 15-year-olds who have the heart and the mind of a 50-year-old, and I've met some 50-year-olds who never grew up. So all in all, I recognize it's not a time, it's not a place in your life, it's not an age or a demographic or what you've accomplished. It's all a state of mind. And the very least we can do for ourselves from here on out is just try. Just try a little bit harder to love and appreciate ourselves. Because I promise you, you get started with that and everything else gets just that much easier. And with the world as complicated as this one, wouldn't it be nice for things to be just a little bit easier, gas to be just a little bit cheaper? You know, things like that. Thank you, Stephen. James, what do you have to say? I say ditto to everything Stephen has said. And, uh, <laughs> to the point that I, I, I guess I, I have a desire and a, and a, a want for everybody to feel what I feel. And it's hard to relate that to each individual because we all are different individuals. How do you go about trying to emulate and relate that? So people can understand what the question. Now say that again. How do you go about relating or uh, getting people to understand how you feel so they can feel like you feel. Oh, so I, I, I think how can I relate to see how they could benefit from the way I feel? True. Um, the one thing I, and I want to make sure that people understand what I'm saying, that sometimes you have to be the change you want to see in the world. So I try to benefit to people by showing my outwardness of happiness. Um, that doesn't mean that I have to conform to this world and be, you know, all mad and all did it, did it, did it, did it. But explain to people there is a better way of doing things. So how I relate that, I do it by the outside action. Just because y'all cussing don't mean I have to curse. Sure. Um, I have a powerful voice, but do it in a tone where people can accept it. Um, some of the other things is one thing I do quite often is just smile. Smiling changes so many so things, many things in, in the environment. In environment. And we have to understand that in that, that 
it becomes a big, big, big thing if people can just see your outwardness versus of what you're feeling. The thing is, sometimes we don't show our feelings on our outward side. We continue to keep them inside. So I continue to relate through them by speaking to them in a tone that's memorable and also accepting their opinions and their values too. Sometimes we don't acknowledge that. We come back and don't even listen to them. We start saying, oh, well, you should have did this. You should have did that. Instead of meeting them where they are. Accepting them, but then giving them a positive to turn into a net, to turn that negative that they're probably giving into a positive. Well, here's an example. Well, I don't like to eat vegetables. And this is a bad negative, but I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that. Here we go. So, okay, I understand. And that's valid. You don't like to eat vegetables. What happens when you eat vegetables? Well, I just don't like them. Okay, I do understand that. What you don't like about them? Because they're still having a feeling about eating vegetables. Well, when I when I eat them, it reminds me of my, my mother and she burnt them up one time and things like that. Number one is... Guess what? Change their mind. Let me give you a sample or let me cook for you because maybe you just had a bad experience that you don't want to experience anymore. Which can still emote a feeling. But then again, guess what? I'm offering a new experience and hoping that they can change their mind and change their mindset to move forward from whatever trigger that was in their mother cooking that vegetable and it was horrible. But then I'm doing it with love. I'm doing it with the appreciation and I'm doing it with something that they probably haven't experienced before is genuineness. So relating that to them, they didn't offer, they, they, they started liking the experience. They awed in the genuineness but then again, guess what? Now they forgot about just how awful that vegetable was. And if it's good as I cooked it, guess what? They can experience that over and over again. Most of the time, we base our feelings off experience. Things that we've come into contact with. So in relating that, I try to offer everyone a good experience. And that's how I relate that. Well, if they, they don't understand genuinely and they rely more on you to give them that again instead of them establishing it for themselves. That's very well said. Sometimes you have to know your boundaries. You have to set boundaries in this too as well. Because the thing is, if that, and like I tell people, I'm a, I'm a, com, um, a comedic too, so I'm going I'm to have fun. But at the end of the day, I will tell anybody, if you are looking for that, then there's a payment plan that you can seek for me to come to you individually to do this for you until you get it right. But you have to pay. It's a job now. Okay. My thing is, I'm not responsible for everybody else's self-love. I'm responsible for mine. It, it's time for you to pay me now if I got to continue to show you how to do that. That's what therapists get paid for. That's what life coaches get paid for. That's what different people get paid for because now you are now the subject matter expertise in trying to produce feelings and love for them when they need to produce them for themselves. You can't, you can't produce that for them. They can only produce it from their experiences. And most times in many different situations, people base it off the experience that they've had. And maybe they have experienced each somebody some, somewhere different. And guess what usually happens? They're going to go to the experience that they like the most. That's why people come and ask you, oh, I like hanging around you because, you know, you just keep it real. But guess what? 
if they keep coming around and they're not doing anything from themselves, guess what? You're going to be like, hey, I like you coming around, but I like for us to grow together. And how can we grow together? By they planting their root in the same ground that you planted them yours in to start their own self-love plan. And that's when you start building it for them. But then again, guess what? Their roots need to be planted. Not in, not in your same soil, but in similar soil in order for them to grow. So let's see, watch it grow. Prune things, you're going to have mistakes. I had a conversation with someone earlier. It's about what your experiences was with your mother, your father. But when you become an adult, you when you know better, you do better. And sometimes we have to experience that to get to know who we are for ourselves because we have been, we've practiced what we knew when we were where we were. So how do we go forward in growing, evolving, experiencing new things, and also being a better us? And that's one thing, and this is my father, this is James that I'm talking to, but this is my father. And the one thing he always told us to be, I want you to be better than me. And I took that to heart. And I said, what does that mean to me? And me becoming better being that, okay, I could have taken the same path he took, but something hit me saying, okay, he just want us to see, he want to see growth in us, both spiritually, mentally, and physically. Sure. That's all. He wants us to be happy. Growth doesn't mean you need a billion dollars. Growth doesn't mean that you need to be owning the Empire State Building. Growth means whatever that measure unit is for you and what your happiness specifically means. And it's about your happiness and your happiness only. I'm glad you said that too, because even in the fact of you having said that to your children, and you have eight of them, all eight of them will hear it differently when you say it. But still, you can't make sure all eight of them do the same thing or perform the same. All you can do is to hope they accept and do their best. Uh, and I think that it's the same way when you're around people trying to uh, exercise realness, exercise trueness, exercise genuinely, all those things, everybody look at it and perceive it differently. So you, all you can do is really hope and pray that they will do their best. That's all you can hope for. And that is so true. And the one thing is, and that's what self-love is about. How do we advocate for self? Stephen, Stephen love is not going to be my love. James love is not going to be my love. But what is your measurable unit in loving yourself? That's important. Many of us try to put love units in by having different things. But then again, self-love comes from within. And what is that within measurable moment specifically for you? Because if you don't find it, you're going to continue to see that you're hitting brick walls about, oh, well, why something didn't happen? Well, well why that didn't? And I just told them they should have did that because you was trying to put your love into something but had no self-love. So then again, are you emoting love for the other person and not emoting that love for yourself? And that only makes you feel good if they do better. But guess what? Self-love starts right with you. And that's starting at the beginning of you employing yourself to move your emotions and your feelings within yourself and not for anyone else. We hope that everyone would do great. In real life, we know that's not possible. That's, that's just reality of it all. Everybody's not going to be great. That's, I, I know that's my reality. But then again, I can put that into the atmosphere that you're going to be great. 
you have to have the desire and the self-love to believe that. So I want to go ahead and just talk about some other things about take yourself somewhere new. Why don't you travel? These are some things where you can start at. Journal. Writing is a proven to be a therapeutic way. Mirror work. Like I said, I, I love to do mirror work. You go to the mirror and look straight into your eyes and say to your reflection, I love you just as you are. And I want to be your friend. Be friends with yourself. I know I'm, a, I'm my own best friend. How about that? <laughs> but you can choose your own words, of course. But the effect of this is incredible, powerful. I speak life into myself every day. And like Stephen said, we're not, let me be quite honest with everyone. Judah don't have good days every day. Let me just keep it real. I don't have good days every day. I'm not as bubbly every day. It's just it's how life is. But in my non-bubbly days, guess what? I sit and meditate and say, you know what? I want tomorrow to be better. I can hope for tomorrow, but tomorrow is not promised. So then again, I think about it from a, our perspective. Well, if I just get up and just walk around the block for about an hour, I can engage the mechanical process and the chemical process in my body that's manipulating me to lie down here and don't do anything. We are as tired as we give to ourselves. Let me say that slowly. We are tired as we are to what we give to ourselves. If you say you're tired, you're gonna be tired. Steven, I saw you coming on. What you gotta say? I just wanna say that was a really strong point to make or is it not? I mean, I almost lost my friend thoughts. Maybe one thing, but that's a strong point to make that you're you're going to go through these processes no matter what. Just like you said, you're not going to be happy every day. And, you know, you got to work your energy to do this. But the strongest point I think you just made was a lot of people will tell themselves that they want a better tomorrow. They want a better future. And then maybe they could put off some things until tomorrow. But tomorrow is never promised. Take it from somebody who's had like eight or nine life and death experiences, and I'm only 30 years old at this rate. It's never promised. It's never guaranteed. And some people you think that are going to be there tomorrow, they might not be. And uh, that's why I think it's so crucial that we have these shows and that we have these talks and that we to make that point. Because we don't want to just keep putting off these things and, and, and keep putting off this growth for ourselves, guys. We want to start doing this today if we can. And that's why we've been doing this show, just to show you guys how the little things make a difference. We'll take some baby steps first. But at the end of the day, tomorrow's never promised. And I think that should resonate heavy with you guys. And I'm glad you said it. And before Stephen leave off the platform, we want to thank him. This is the end of season five. Um, we want to thank him. And not saying that we're leaving right now, but we're still going to have conversation um, and, but we want to thank him for being here and just offer some words of wisdom before he leaves. And I think James will still stay on, but I still have some things and I want to go over the um, actual um, meditation too as well. So thank you, Stephen, for a successful, successful season five. You have added nothing but value to where we were in season five. And we can't wait to season six here. We have some more things coming up and we just, we wanna thank you and honor you and just value the time that you have spent with the Rise Creating Your Voice podcast um, on th th during this season. So I know you have some words of wisdom before you part two as well. Absolutely, first and foremost, thank all of you. It's been an honor and a pleasure doing this show with you guys. I've had so much fun, I've learned a lot more than I expected to learn <laughs> of, of just a handful of episodes. You know, this feels like we've been doing this a lot longer than we have been because I feel like this is something which is a part of my routine now. And when it comes to Judah giving us homework, I know none of us have liked the word homework since we were kids. <laughs> but frankly, this homework has been extremely I've spent the last couple of months notating when I get upset. I've spent the last couple of months notating the things that 
make me happy and make me sad. Notating the different parts of my day that I might feel better or worse. I've been spending time in my homework thinking about what makes me feel important and loved. What I value in life. What brings me joy? What brings me happiness? I've had all kinds of things that I've had to address just being on this show. So I imagine you as the listeners have had the opportunity to do the same. And like I said before, when I first hopped on this show, and like I'll say on my last show here, it's been a huge honor to be with you guys as an average Joe. That's what I consider myself. I've just been learning as much as you guys have. I've only just had the opportunity to speak a little bit more than some. And uh, I can't thank you guys enough for such a great experience, such good thinking processes, thought processes, and having had the chance to grow and learn with you guys as well. So I hope this is something uh, that we get to continue to do down the line. I'm very excited for the new season as well. There's a lot of really cool topics that will be discussed. Uh, but thank you guys again as an audience, and then you, Judah, especially as a host. It's been a lot of fun, and I, I have nothing but great things to say. You no, know, great, great, great. And the one thing is we're not getting off, and I know James has something to say. So those who want to stay on, definitely stay on. He just had to jump off because he has some other priorities too as well. James, I think you still want to say something. Go ahead. I do. Um, um, you know, the students that you said, I have really been overwhelmed with knowledge and wisdom. And I appreciate you for all that. I'm like you. I, I'm, I'm, I look forward to the episode. So uh, I'm, I'm saying, hoping that we begin to be these or something similar to that. But again, the real thought provoking to get you to the point of where you really think genuinely and deeply within yourself. And I really appreciate you for giving that to and always remember, if you want to go back and hear our other shows, all you got to do is go to www.therise.live and you actually just go into the episodes and you will see all of them say Stephen Martin. So you just click on them and you can see all of the shows that we've done. He has been so phenomenal. And the one thing is when we created The Rise, Creating Your Voice, we want to see average Joes. It's so many times that we look up to celebrities and other things. It's, but is that reality? I want somebody just like me. Put on your pants the same way, can do the necessary things that we usually do. Struggle with bills, um, making payments, stuff like that. <laughs> I want people that are struggling just like me. That's what I want. And the thing is, I'm not saying that celebrities don't struggle. But then again, the average Joe for me is someone that's middle class, whether you're poor, whether you whatever. We don't care. We want you on here so we can all become better citizens. That's all. Better citizens. And the thing is, it starts with us. It doesn't start with that 1% of celebrities. It starts with us. We are the majority, not the minority. <laughs> okay, right. go ahead, Stephen. <laughs> oh, that's right. No, no, you said it, said it yourself. I mean, don't get me wrong. This show could really have a great time if we had Tony Robbins on here or something. <laughs> At the end of the day, which one of us here is going to relate? And I think being able to relate, being able to find a coexistence, feeling like you're surrounded by family, brothers, sisters, friends, these things further instill in us the confidence we need to move forward. And I, I, I know I've said this a bunch of times, guys, and I'll keep saying it until my face turns blue. The majority of the time, guys, we are the problem. And if we could just find individuals like Judah, the people on this show, People just like you and I who want better, it just further instills in us the courage, the affirmation, and the confidence that we are doing the right thing here, and we are trying our best. And I don't care if we figure it all out today or in 20 more years, guys. So long as we are trying, that's all I could ever ask. And as so long as we continue to try, we will see benefits of our efforts. The fruits of our labors might not come overnight. But at the end of the day, guys, I promise you, everything that we are doing here is both selfish and selfless. Selfish in the sense where every single person listening here should be able to take some of this advice and implement it into their daily lives. Selfless in the sense where everyone who's here wants what's best for ourselves and for each other. And that's why we're going to continue to utilize each other as a support system. We're going to spread the word. 
We're going to tell a foe. We're going to tell a friend. We're going to get the word out there so we can get as many people talking as we can, right? That is so correct. That is so correct. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So let's give a round of applause for Steven. And not saying that he's going anywhere. He is just leaving for the moment. We, you know, have to, you know, talk about season six and some other things too as well. But we have some things coming in. So we definitely want to give hand claps for Steven, his knowledge. Like he said, he's an average Joe. So how many average Joes you know that have that much knowledge? And that's one thing. I've learned a lot from him being that, you know, hey, this is life. It's a lot of us out here like this that just wants to have a tribe and people that we can have genuine conversation with like this instead of just talking about the celebrities. Why can't we just talk about ourselves? We're celebrities, too. Hey, I like that. I like that <laughs> Let's talk about ourselves. <laughs> The only reason I got to get going is, unfortunately, I got some work, but I'm going to be listening in. I'm going to be here every show after this as well. So I look forward to talking to you guys in the chat. Judah, thank you all very much again. James, you too. And uh, I'll be listening in from the other side. Y'all take care. Thank you. And you're more than welcome. And and one thing is we're not leaving and the show will still continue to go on. In April, it will be potpourri shows and still at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time and 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. So potpourri, just get ready for it. Um, it's going to be wild <laughs> until we start season six, which is um, probably two to three weeks later. Um, so I want to just mirror back to number six is you can create a mission board. And why I call it a mission board instead of a vision board? Sometimes our vision is blurred when we have a vision board. It goes beyond our expectations. It goes beyond what we feel that we need. So that's why I call it a mission board. So start creating a mission. We need to meditate every day. Listen to your gut. Another benefit of meditation is being able to recognize your instincts for what they are and listening to them. When you develop the ability to trust your own intuition, you foster self-love. Knowing how to trust your gut is to stand in your own power and own it. Nine, regularly self-care. Self-care, always. Self-love is much more than getting a haircut and a mani and petty. However, taking the time to respect and honor your physical body with loving gestures that make you feel good is highly recommended. Confidence and beauty do start within, but sometimes looking good can help you feel better on the inside when you are struggling with self-esteem. List your accomplishments. Be thankful for what you've done. Don't be too shy. Give yourself a little pat on the back. Give credit what credit is due. I don't care if you just wrote down something. Give yourself credit. Write a list of everything you are proud of, whether it's on educational or work achievement or simply learning a new recipe or deciding a master, a yoga position. Big or small accomplishments are all worthy of praise, no matter what they are. Start patting yourself on the back. Practice forgiveness. This is hard for people. I know it's hard for me, but guess what? I conquered it. Forgiveness is vital to your mental and emotional health. Holding on to resentment towards others only hurts you in the long run. Equally identify where you beat yourself up on, on yourself for choices you regret or whatever toxic thoughts you have after your past and then decide to let them go. Tell yourself you are just another human on the journey of life and love yourself through all of your mistakes. Love yourself through all your mistakes. Don't be afraid to say no. I, I, I know how to say that now. I love to say no. A lot of stress can be avoided when you realize it's okay to say no sometimes. If you don't feel like going out or, or feel overwhelmed, listen to that and take it as a sign to spend some time alone getting grounded again. You cannot please everybody and you need to make sure you are being true to yourself first. Let me read that again. Don't be afraid to say no. A lot of stress can be avoided when you realize it's okay to say no sometimes. If you don't feel like going out or feel overwhelmed, listen to that and take it as a sign to spend some time alone getting grounded again. You cannot please everybody and you need to make sure you are being true to yourself first. Leave your comfort zone. Get on the flip side of the above point. Say yes occasionally when you normally say no. You can tell if you're listening to your gut. 
whether your no's are coming from a place of fear or a genuine desire not to do something. Try saying yes to something out of the ordinary for you and say how it feels to challenge yourself in new ways. List, list positive traits in all your friends. I tried to do that and some of it didn't work for me. I'm just gonna be honest. Um, I didn't have, some of my friends didn't have a lot of positive traits. So I had to let them go. I'm okay with that. I've, I'm growing. I'm, I'm just letting you know, sometimes you grow faster than other trees. I'm just being honest with you. I'm not saying you go dump all your friends off, but the thing is, if they you don't see the growth in them, how can y'all conversate? This is a fun one to do in a couple or with a friend. Sit down together for five minutes and list the strong qualities and positive aspects that you see that you each identify in each other. This can be an amazing way to bond in relationships and also the uplifting effect of raising your own self-esteem. This one I really like. Be childlike. That is me almost every day. Find a, photo, find a photo of yourself as a child and really study it. Try to remember what that little person dreamed of, what they believed and wished for. See the innocence and light in your young eyes and find that place in you now. The place of purity and playfulness. Self-love never went away. It just pushed, it was just pushed aside. When you remember your childlike innocence, worries seem to fade away. You might find some of these suggestions scary at first. Perhaps you may even shy away from some of our the tips that we just gave because they're threatening your normal way of thinking and behaving. But the bottom line is you will feel so much happier and more positive in your life if you work on developing a love for yourself. Let me say that is, again. The bottom line is you will feel so much happier and more positive in your life if you work on developing a love for yourself. Once you master some of the ways to create self-love, you will realize how crucial it is to own who you are and shine your authentic light in the world. Always remember self-love. What do you have to say about that, James? I think you need to put on self-love. Uh, all of the nuggets that you gave to see, that you gave to learn to use them part of our uh, homework we like to them but this program is very fun to do I got to the point that I tried to involve myself in many things but I have to learn to also make sure that I reward myself and that's it. Great, great, great. How many of you guys ready for that self meditation part? I'm always ready for this, being that it's 1031. Yeah. Being that it's 1031 in DC. So, you know, I'm ready to go to sleep after this one. Uh, but thank you guys, everyone that has been joining in so collectively and religiously and just setting your focus on the homework. Definitely go and find some self-love. One thing that I do employ, because I know everyone has mirrors in their house, you can take an erasable marker and just start writing positive things about yourself. One thing that I did was, you know, I took some, um, um, what do they call it? Like body paint or whatever. And I started writing words on me and just stood in the mirror because some of those words hurt me too as well. Some things hurt me and things like that too as well. So in my self-love, I started erasing those things that probably tortured me when I was bullied and other things. And I did a visual thing of erasing those things so I won't be involved in those things. So I wrote them all on my arm to let them know that they were in my skin. But after that, I released them as I washed and I showered afterwards and saw that that was a healing process for me because basically I was processing what people were saying about me that I know that wasn't true about me, but I processed it. That's one thing that opened me up to self-love is I had to get rid of all of those things that I thought that was bad for me that people were saying about me. And they're going to continue to talk about me. But guess what? At the end of the day, I have self-love. So 
like we used to say as, as a child, um, you know, whatever bounces off me sticks on to you because I'm I'm rubber, you glue. Whatever you bounce on, say to me, bounce on to you. So have that mentality. Be childlike. Hey, I'm rubber, you glue. Everything you say about me bounces off of me and bounce on to you, and it sticks to you. So you don't know. Always remember what I've always said on each and every one of my podcasts. Hurt people hurt people. The one thing is you have to employ is you need to stop hurting so you don't hurt someone else. Does that mean that we're going to stop hurting instantly? No. That means we can, we have processes that we need to adhere to. We need to do the necessary homework. We need to listen to more podcasts. We need to listen to more positive things to bring us. Sometimes you can listen to something and say, I don't get it. Totally agreeable. Guess what? They have so many people out here that's giving you information that you can relate to instead of turning on that TV and doing those other things where people are fighting or they're bickering or they're cussing and they're doing a lot of other things that clouding your judgment and clouding your mind too as well. I'm not saying that's entertaining for some people, but let me be honest, Judah does not turn on his TV like that. If it does not have a positive message, I'm not listening to it. So that's how I block out those things. If you're not giving me a positive message, guess what? I don't listen to it. I'm rubber, you're glue. Whatever you say about me bounces off of me and sticks on to you. So let's go ahead and prepare for this actual thing. It's about 15 to 20 minutes long. I want you to fall asleep, but here it is. How many of you guys enjoying the show? Can we get some hand claps and we get some different things? And I know that this has been a good one, but this is our last of season five and I am thankful to have successfully finished season five and also being able to put on a whole new face and everything for season six. But like I said, we are still on um, every Sunday with Sunday Jewels on the Rise. Um, That's on Instagram Live, and that's at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you have Instagram, definitely subscribe and like at Jules Mentoring LLC, or you can go to my page at The Rise Creating Your Voice. So all of my pages are really either Judah Bernard or The Rise Creating Your Voice. My Twitter is at Creating Creating Rise, at Creating Rise. So some things we couldn't, you know, make it um, a continuity of. So I'm Judah Bernard on Facebook. I'm um, Creating Rise on Twitter and on Instagram is The Rise Creating Your Voice. Like I said, you can Google me, you can go to Judah Bernard, or you can Google The Rise Creating Your Voice. And in the algorithms, we have our own page. So you can click on some of that stuff and you can find me anywhere. Um, Are there any questions? Have you been enjoying the show? Come on with the meditation. (laughs) I'm coming. I have to make my announcements. Like I said, number one, the last thing that we are going to still do this, so make sure you tune in next week to as well. Um, bring a friend, and also we're going to have potpourri, and potpourri is exactly what it is. Is when you come in, you find out what it is. <laughs> All right, let me get to the music. Let me get to the music. Are we ready? Good. Find yourself in a comfortable seated position. You can use a meditation cushion or seat if you have it. You can use whatever seated relaxing position as long as it makes you feel comfortable and is completely pain free. Take your time to find your space. Sit up nice and tall. Keep your shoulders relaxed. 
close your eyes and breathe. Lay your palms softly on your thighs. Once you find your moment, take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale out from your mouth. Take a moment to appreciate and acknowledge being present. Let's work our way to love. What is the reason that you forget to love yourself? Your confidence. Try to forget about it. Try to reset what you think you know and start again from scratch. Enjoy this moment as a complete moment of freedom. Your mind is lighter, free from all the negative thoughts, ready to get nourished with some positive vibes for a new dose of real, profound, grounding trust. Keep in mind that love is not something you have to look for. This is something that's inside of you. Hidden from a surface made up of worries, schedules, social masks, and a wrong negative conception of yourself. You just have to release some love. Give it a chance to shine, to lead you. What you have to look for is the perfect combination of your body and soul. A balanced, serene mood and attitude that feels like you're preparing a fertile soul to grow amazing, beautiful flowers as divine insights from a higher and more caring version of yourself. Getting ready to release all your magic. This is the day and time to let your walls down and feel free to show up with no defenses. Vulnerable, widely open, with an open heart. Take a long deep breath in and take a long deep breath out. Listen to the sound of your breathing becoming heavier and heavier at every breath you take. Use this moment to focus on your emotions and on how you feel. Focus on your breath to create a regular soothe and intimate environment to cultivate a new improved mindful an open mindset. The sound of your breath with its vibrational frequencies will show up and it will spread all over your body, nourishing at a different stage, a deeper level. Release your sense of discomfort, of loneliness, of insecurity, Experience the present moment because it's time to heal. Heal your emotional wounds, feeling grateful for yourself once again. Focus on one particular thought. Think about that one thing you love about yourself. Inhale and smile quietly to yourself. 
Practice kindness. Be your own friend. Exhale without a sigh. You just have to do this with love. With love caring gestures. A little bit every day. Baby steps. Explore your body. Your mind. Your emotions. How you really feel. Acknowledge it and keep things going. But this is not a race. This is not a challenge. This is the time of your life to reconnect with your true higher self. This is your time to spread your little wings and soar higher than before, stronger than before, better than before. Take a deep breath and visualize a door with you. With you excelling, trying to open the door with all your energy, your power, your new confidence and love. See the light waiting for you on the other side. This is the warm wave of love that you deserve for what you really are. Your inner magic you often try to hide is now ready to spread all over your life. Connect to that light and enjoy every single ray you see. Feel it all over your face, your heart, your spirit. Take another deep breath with a sigh. Rub your hands together and generate a little heat between them. Once they are warm, warm, put them on your eyes. Take this, these last precious moments to acknowledge your commitment to this practice. To bring that light, that magic with you in, in your daily life. When you are ready, put your hands down and gently open your eyes. How did that feel for everyone? I know, James, you're still on the stage. We still have our listeners in. How did that feel? How did that feel? How did that feel? Come off mute. We know that this has been a very valuable season five, and we want everybody to know just continue, just continue, just continue to do what you need to do. How was that for you, James? <laughs> that was enjoyable, but I had to trying to make it home now, I'm I understand, I understand. So those who are out listening before, we just want people to know that we are here every Tuesday night until we start season six, but season six will be on the Podbean Live app. And also we will be doing um, Sunday Jewels on the Rise. We want to thank Ms. LaRonda at Jewels Mentoring LLC. We want to give you 
her props um, on Sunday Jewels on the Rise every Sunday, and we will be here every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, and also 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So as we always say, tell a friend, tell a foe, tell your spouse, heck, tell everyone. We'll see you on the next podcast, and that will be this Sunday, and have a great night. Bye. Have a good night and we'll see you Sunday.